Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another craft demo here at the Lebanon Senior Center. Spring sprung this weekend. We had our first day of spring, so I thought we would play with flowers today. I know we have a lot of folks who, uh, one of their favorite parts of spring, is starting to see the landscape come back alive with all the blooms, either trees budding or those first blossoms of daffodils coming through the ground. It just brings so much hope and joy. They're a lot of fun. Um, so today's craft is pretty simple and you can get really creative with it. We're going to talk about dying flowers. Now I know a lot of people might have done this before in life, so this might not be new, but maybe it'll remind you about the concept and uh, largely you can use things that are around your house, so that's pretty cool. You need, I suggest white flowers. White flowers are the easiest to dye. Um, I like things like daisies, um, they're too, you know, inexpensive, um, and carnations. Are also really good ones for dyeing flowers. Um, you can certainly dye yellow or something. It's just harder to take when a flower already has color in it. Sometimes the colors don't show up as vibrantly. So I suggest, especially if it's your first time and you need that instant gratification, start with a nice white flower and uh, you will need some just regular um, food grade food coloring. You can use the stuff that comes in little squeeze bottles or this particular one. Um, is one used for icing, uh, coloring frostings and icings. And you can certainly get them just at your local grocery store if you don't already have them at home. It's also a fun thing to do with kids or grandkids uh, with some of that leftover dye from the Easter eggs. Easter's coming up in just a couple of weeks. So some of the same dye you're using to dye your Easter eggs, you can dye some flowers. So I did a couple of examples So I did some with yellow at home, so you can do a kind of comparison of what they look like up against the white. I do have a close-up image as well, so we can look at those close-ups. And these were at uh, two hours and four hours of sitting in the deck. All right, so you saw kind of what the close-up of the flowers uh, kind of looked like. And I'll show another picture at the end of some of our final product as well. Um, but you kind of get the idea of what they start to look like. And how it works is uh, you will take plain water. There we go. I'll slide my plain water over just a little bit. And you take a bit of that dye. Again, a dropper or this gel. And you're going to get some of that. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Da, 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 da. And of course, the more dye you use, the more intensity you're going to have. Lost my spoon. Two hands. Two hands required. There we go. So I'm just going to mix that dye in. The drops, you don't have to stir as much. The gel, you generally have to stir it a bit to get it to incorporate. We are using the gel, sometimes using a warm water helps. We're going to make the joke theoretically, this will be pink eventually. If there's any truth in labeling. But sometimes it happens with dyes. Sometimes when you're talking about, you know, food dyes, what it looks like isn't necessarily what it turns out to be after something's been sitting in it for a while. This to me looks kind of orangey salmon color. Oops, I got some on the rim. Um, if you have gloves, if you don't want to end up being tie-dyed, that can be a good, good thing to keep around. And I always try to make sure I get my lids back on tight because yeah, you can see whatever touches the dye it gets dyed. All right, so I'm going to come over to these plain white daisies. Um, I find it very useful to strip off any of the leaves. Leaves don't tend to like the dye, so they kind of get wilty and withery anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take those off. And I've already pre-cut these, but I would suggest a clean cut on your flowers. It just helps keep them absorbing that new liquid. So it's always a good tip to do that when you bring home flowers anyway, but if you're going to dye them, give them another quick fresh cut 
Uh, I'm doing it at kind of a nice 45 degree angle. We'll just really kind of open up the volume of the dyed water that the flowers can take on. Alrighty, so I'm going to let those sit there. I'm leaving these ones white just because I want to see the comparison at the end. So we'll put our white flowers on this side. And this isn't one of those fast forwardy kind of trips here. So this does take time and take a couple of hours. I had these ones sitting in their dyed water overnight. So um, it does kind of connect to the tips. And of course, the longer you leave it in, the more color you start to get. But odds are you won't get a perfectly dyed flower. Sometimes the freshness of the flower dictates how well it's going to respond to the dyeing process. Again, sometimes you can keep trimming that stem back just to keep um, the, the flower wanting to draw up more liquid. So the flower um, draws up the color into the petals, kind of like the system of, of our, how water and, and fluids flow throughout our bodies. They have you know, a cell structure that draws up water so it keeps the flower kind of alive, but that does reduce over time. It does kind of clot, shall we say, and it quits uh, being able to draw up water as much. So keeping those stems freshly cut, it's going to bring your stem shorter and shorter, so be careful, it's got to be able to reach the water, but a couple of fresh cuts will help keep that clotting from happening and allow um, your flower to keep pulling up more color into the petals. Um, certainly you can sit here and play with this. I haven't done this before, but I'm going to try it today. I'm going to actually take um, one of these bunches of flowers and then add it to our pink flower water as well to see if we can't maybe get two colors going. I have seen it in flowers that you could purchase at the store where they have multiple colors. I'm not yet sure how they do that, but I'm going to figure out their trick eventually. But I think I'm going to add Oh, maybe one of the blue ones, maybe one of the pink ones, yellow ones. Then one of the yellow ones to our pink water here as well. Because I'm just curious to see if that will draw up some of the pink color into uh, what I have started as a yellow dyed flower. All right, so that's that. It's, well, it's a very fast process. You put the dye in the water, you put the flowers in the water, you walk away and leave it for a while. So we'll come back and see what these look like a little bit later today. So, as you can see, we have our lovely flowers still sitting in their vases. Um, the ones in the middle are the ones that we did at the supposed to be pink food coloring too. Not a lot of dramatic changes a couple of hours in. I don't know if it's that our dye was old or that there was just maybe something about the pink that's not as vibrant. I'm not sure. We should have done red. But you can start to see there's getting to be some changes. If I can get the flowers out. I'm going to see if I can't zoom in closer here. On the very edges inside, you can start to see there's this darker tone taking. You can kind of see up under here. So it is starting to take and be pulled up into the petals. Some of our other flowers, here's our red ones, or our yellow ones. You can see that the tips have come all the way out to the tips and our blue ones in the back as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this craft demo and maybe you can get a little creative in dyeing some of your own colorful flowers as well. Nature does a really good job on her own but sometimes science lets us play with her beautiful artistry and make it something new. Hopefully you guys have a great afternoon and you're inspired to make something beautiful. Bye-bye.